Nestled between the misty mountains and the southern reaches of Mirkwood lie the woods of Lothlorien. Fleeing the mines of Moria, the Fellowship of the Ring would pass into those magical woods where they would meet the elves who protect its borders. These March Wardens of the Galadrim, led by Haldir and his brothers, would take the Fellowship up into their flats in the trees, protecting them from pursuing orcs from Moria. Orofin, one of Haldir's brothers, would gather more elves and go after the orcs, while Haldir, aware of the Ringbearer's quest, would escort the Fellowship to Kalis Galadhon, where they would meet Caliborn and Galadriel, the Lord and Lady of Lorien. So today we're going to be painting some of these mysterious elves. I've got the original Haldir model with sword, as well as four variants of the original metal Lorien elf bowman released in February 2002, all sculpted by Gary Morley. So for these models I started with a bit of a clean up as there was still a lot of mold lines and flashing sticking off them. Then I used a light grey primer from an old Tamiya spray can that I had lying around. The primer ended up looking a bit gritty and in hindsight I should have stripped the models and started over with something else but I decided to clean up what I could and pushed on. Using Coat de Arms faded khaki I then started base coating Haldir and one of the other elf archers cloaks making sure to really get under all the folds and creases in the material. Now the next two elves I'm going to call Royal Guards, the sculpts look to be based on the elves you see guarding Caliborn and Galadriel when they make their entrance in the film, and they're also seen in the background when the Fellowship are leaving Lorien in their boats. So to base coat their cloaks, I began with a mix of Coat de Arms Festa Blue and Vallejo Neutral Grey to get a nice muted grey blue colour, as I still only have a limited range of paints available. For the last elf, I wanted to try out Citadel's contrast paints, so with Gut Rip of Flesh, I applied that over the last archer's cloak. Sticking with the same model and moving on to the highlights, I took some Gut Rip of Flesh and began mixing in some Vallejo Sky Grey building up towards the edges. I then used Rhinox Hide for the pants and the inner sleeves across all the models before base coating all the hands and faces with a Vallejo Natural Flesh. Moving back to the green cloaked elf, I started base coating his robes with Mornfang brown, adding some bone colour into the brown on my wet palette to gradually lighten it with each highlight layer. For Haldir and the other khaki elf, the cloak highlights were done by mixing khaki with sky grey. I actually dry brushed these cloaks first as the material on the film costumes used a wool with a lighter whitish colour weaved through, so I wanted to attempt to simulate it somewhat on these miniatures. I then did a final highlight with some more sky grey mixed in and applied it to the edges of all the folds. Next up I took some neutral grey and base coated the outer tunics for these two elves, and used the horse tone grey for the under tunics. I wanted the cloth to look a bit more earthy, so I then took a sepia ink from Vallejo and applied it over the tunics once the base coats were dry. Highlighting the tunics was then done by mixing neutral grey and bone. Moving back to the Royal Guards, I took some Vallejo Burned Flesh and base coated their robes, followed up by a wash of Agrax Earthshade to darken and define the fabric. Now with some Nocturna Shadow from Vallejo, I started to paint the boots, doing the same for all five models. For the tunics on the Royal Guards, I applied Vallejo Military Green as a base and again used Bone mixed in to highlight. 
Now with the robe sections dried, I then went over with burned flesh to build up highlights, finishing it off with some more bone mixed in. At this point, I'm going to apologize for anyone trying to follow along. <laughs> I'm realizing there's no order or method to how I painted these, I just made these up as I went along, hence why I'm jumping from model to model. So back to highlighting a random thing we base coated earlier. I mixed some sky grain and nocturna shadow to detail the boots, doing the same across all five elves. The two royal guards have leather chest armor, so for that I use coat de arms chestnut brown. And as this is the chosen color for the leather, I use the same paint for the belts, quivers, scabbards, and braces. For the bows, arrow shafts, and the hilts of the swords, I used a base coat of rhinoxide, and then jumping back to the leather sections, I highlighted it all with Mornfang Brown. At this point, I needed to highlight the cloaks on the royal guards, and re-watching my footage, I realized I forgot to show that I'd given them a wash of non oil. So now that it was all well and truly dry, I then reapplied Festa Blue to start the highlighting, mixing in sky grey for the lighter tones towards the edges. For the hair of the royal guards, while most of the elves are blondes, I noticed one of the royal guards in the film was a redhead. So taking some parasite brown, which is a nice orangey brown rusty color, base coated the hair on one of the elves. This was then later highlighted with mixing some Parasite Brown and Vallejo Pale Sand. For the rest of the Blonde Elves, I had a bottle of Vallejo Khaki from a paint set, which was a bit more golden in comparison to the Cote de Arms one I used earlier. So I used that for the base of all the Blondes. I then took some Pale Sand and highlighted the hair, carefully picking out the strands of the hair on the sculpts. For Haldir though, I wanted him to stand out a little more, and as he's very much more of a platinum blonde, went with a straight base coat of pale sand. I then watered down some sepia ink and applied that over the hair to bring out the detail, before highlighting back over the hair with pale sand again. The fletchings of the arrows were then base coated with sky grey and highlighted with white. At this point I revisited the sleeves and pants, mixing rhinox hide and pale sand to bring out the highlights. I also did this for the wooden parts of the weapons. To add some definition to the flesh, I washed the hands and faces with sepia ink, then reapplied the natural flesh colour, leaving the washed areas in the deeper or shadowed areas. I then very carefully picked out the eyes with white, before moving under my cheaty technique of using a fine tip marker to dot the pupils of the eyes. Then as a final highlight to the skin, I used Vallejo Alphic Flesh to pick out the raised areas like the brows, nose, ears, etc. For the metallic parts, I started with Vallejo Gunmetal on the metal parts of the Royal Guard's braces, taking care to only pick out the top layer, avoiding the leather layer underneath. I then base coated Haldir's sword before taking Vallejo Silver and using it to highlight the metals we'd just painted. And while the silver's out, don't forget to pick out the belt buckles too. Moving on to the gold, I made the decision to go for as much screen accuracy as I could here, and unlike the bows on the Helm's Deep versions of these elves, the gold leaf pattern isn't actually on these sculpts, so I began the tedious process of freehanding it using Vallejo Glorious Gold. This paint was actually quite gluggy, but if I watered it down a little, the pigment wouldn't be strong enough to stand out. But after a lot of back and forth with gold and fixing my messy lines by going back over it with browns, I got it to an okay state. Then I applied the gold detailing to the other areas like Haldir's scabbard and sword as well as on the quivers and the tips of the bows. These were then given a highlight of shining gold from Vallejo. Now finally we're onto the bases. 
I painted the bases with rhinoxide, and once that dried, I glued on some Geek Gaming Scenics Mediterranean soil, which had some nice light stone and grassy tones that I think fit in well with the vibes of Lorien. I then cleaned up any excess basing material off the rims and using a brush just dusted off any excess that stuck to the models. And with the bases done, it's time to show them off. So in the end, I think these turned out okay, though I think I had something a little different in mind when I started. I definitely struggled trying to batch paint a group of models that had some substantial differences in paint scheme, so if I were to do this again I'd separate them out and paint each variant together to completion before working on the next ones. Either way, I got them done and I'm still pretty fresh back into the hobby so I'm learning with every mistake I make. So that's all for this episode, I hope you liked it even though it was a bit all over the place. The next model I do I'm just going to focus on a single hero character which I'm really excited for. So I hope to see you all there.